and is only made possible through your generous support. From coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. The Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. Your part to the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from the International Production Center in Irving, Texas, are Emmy nominated actress, author, singer, and songwriter Janine Turner, New York Times best selling author, and pastor of Oak Hills Church in San Antonio, Texas. Max Lucado, international evangelist and founder of The Basement, Matt Pitt. Dove Award winning recording artist, Phillips, Craig, and Dean. And ready to take your calls, prayer partners from around America. Church in Austin, Texas, Randy Phillips. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, everyone. And if I'm the first to wish you a Merry Christmas, I'm so happy. Thank you for joining us here on Praise the Lord for an incredible Praise the Lord Christmas program with best selling author Max Lucado with my friend from Alabama, crazy young man, changed in the world for Jesus, Matt Pitt, Hollywood actress Janine Turner, and my buddies, Sean Craig and Dan Dean, and we're going to praise the Lord tonight. I want you to go call somebody and tell them, turn on TV in. We're going to be lifting up the name of Jesus. But I have one question for all of you. Are you ready to worship the Lord? All right, let's go. We praise you, Lord. We praise you for your awesome goodness to us. Your name is holy, awesome, and wonderful. We have come to adore your name tonight. Are you ready to adore the Lord? Let's go tell it on the mountain.
save us. Only the name of Jesus. Aren't you glad for the name of Jesus? An angel came down to a virgin with a heavenly word. The name of a beautiful promise for a fallen world. Child of the most holy one, and they will call him a wonderful counselor, prince of peace, everlasting father. But a one name will stand high above all the rest. Jesus, Jesus, there's only one name, every tongue shall confess. Jesus, call his name Jesus. No other name Only one Lord can redeem us He's the only way For a child has been given for us Give from the Father above And we will call him wonderful Counselor Jesus, 
season off right. We are so excited to have our new album with us called Fearless. We'll be singing some songs off of that in a moment. But I am just, guys, what can you say about this man? His books have been read by millions and tens of millions of people. Uh, he is the most quoted, least credited <laughs> author in the universe. We've all preached his sermons. In fact, people have come up to us and said, you didn't preach very good Sunday. And we say to them, go see Max Lucado. <laughs> he needs to do better. <laughs> Max Lucado is the consummate Christian. He is a husband. He's a father. He's a Christian. He has integrity. He is everything that's right with Christianity. He is a man that's passionate after God's heart. And it's so hard to get him uh, to, to be still because he's traveling all over the place. He's here tonight. And I want you to go call somebody and tell them to tune in right now because his words will touch your heart and set this season in a place where you don't have to fear anything. God is with us. Would you welcome the incredible Amen. Max Lucado? <laughs> Hello, my friend. Good to see you. Oh, always good to see you. Boy, don't you love these guys? <laughs> There's something else. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, something else. You're an awful good man. So are you, Randy. Well, I love, go ahead and be seated. I love Phillips, Craig, and Dean, don't you? Yeah. Boy. Yeah. And you know, there's something about these guys that I really love, and that is they've been faithful to this task for many, many years. Uh, I know they don't look as old as they really are, <laughs> but they are old. They are old. And they've been faithful to God all these many years. I can remember listening to their stuff years and years ago. And here they are still serving God, still singing about Him. That's good. Isn't it? good. There's just something about that person who, who can stay faithful over the long haul, isn't there? A lot of people can come and go. But that person or those people who stay faithful over the long haul, that's really special. Yeah. Boy, it's a good-looking group. And hello to all of you all over the world uh, for tuning in tonight. We thank you. We pray God's richest blessings upon you. May this be an hour of great encouragement. May your hearts be lifted. And may your season of Christmas be focused on Jesus uh, himself. This is a special uh, season for me. I'm about to kick off my 25th year in Christian publishing. Yeah. I began when I was two, 
And to mark this year, uh, the 25th year of Christian publishing in the year 2010, I'm partnering with World Vision. And we're trying to raise up 25,000 child sponsors. You know, there are a billion people today who are dying and are struggling with hunger. There are three billion people who are desperately poor. And that's a tragedy. But did you know the real tragedy is we could fix it if we just do it. You know, there, there's, a, there's enough food on the earth to feed every person. Uh, there's enough resources to take care of every need. Now, I know that's a very complicated issue. I know we can't just snap our fingers and all the governmental problems and all the port corruption would be solved. But you know what? We could all do just a little more. You can make sure a child gets clean water, vaccinations, and a shot at education. And boy, that's a, that's a lot when you don't have anything, isn't it? So pray about that, would you? Go to maxlocato.com, and we're trying to do all we can do to help these children all over the world have a fair shot at life. Man, I'm, getting a, uh, I'm having a lot of fun telling a joke that uh, somebody told me the other day. It's a story about a guy who got on, a, uh, got on an airplane, flew to another city, got off the plane, and got in a taxi. It was late at night. He was so tired. He just could barely keep his eyes open when he rode from the taxi to the hotel. And the taxi driver didn't say anything for about 15 or 20 minutes. And the, guy, the passenger didn't say anything. And after, after 15 or 20 minutes, the passenger reached up and he tapped the taxi driver on the shoulder. And it scared the taxi driver so much, he nearly wrecked the car. He jerked it to the right and he jerked it to the left. Finally, he stabilized the vehicle and pulled over to the side of the road. And he looked over his shoulder at the passenger and he said, Sir, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to react that way. But you need to know, this is my first day as a taxi driver. <laughs> and for the last 25 years, I've been driving a hearse. Oh. <laughs> well, he's not the first person to experience a sudden shock, is he? A sudden fear. In fact, we're feeling our share today. You know, they're talking layoffs at work. They're talking slowdowns in the economy. They're talking further deployments into Afghanistan. They're talking downturns in the job market. And then we have our personal fears, the mole on the neck, or the tick of the clock, as it takes us closer and closer to the grave. We fear being sued. We fear finishing last. We fear being broke. We fear getting sick. H1N1 has become a buzzword where two years ago it didn't even exist. Seems like the old fears weren't enough, we create new fears. We are a frightened generation. Our generation takes more mood-altering drugs than any generation in the history of mankind. One psychiatrist said that children today experience the same level of anxiety as a psychiatric patient in the 1950s. We're scared. We're frightened. Fear, it seems, has, has taken a lease, a hundred-year lease on the building next door and moved in and set up shop. And yet for all the room that, that fear takes and all the noise that fear makes, does fear do any good? <laughs> has fear ever written a song? Has fear ever led or directed a symphony? Has fear ever led a church? Has fear ever pulled a nation out of bigotry or a people out of poverty? No. Hope has. Yes. Faith has. Yes. <laughs> Jesus has. Yes. <laughs> we pay a high price for fear, don't we? Yes. Fear is not only difficult because of what it does, but fear is difficult because of what it keeps us from doing. Yes. Wouldn't it be great to have no fear? What if you could fear less tomorrow than you do today? What if I could take a fear magnet and hover it over your heart and extract every last shaving of dread and anxiety? Would you be a different person? Think you'd be a better parent or husband or wife? This is the promise behind Jesus' question. He once asked this question. 
Now, why are you afraid? And he asked that question in the middle of a storm on the Sea of Galilee. Now, for such a famous sea, the Sea of Galilee is really not very big. It's more of a lake than it is a sea. And when the winds would come out of the Golan Heights onto the Sea of Galilee, it could turn the Sea of Galilee into a turbulent body of water. Did you know that the waves could get as high as 10 feet tall? Imagine if you're in a 30-foot fishing boat and you're bouncing from 10-foot tall wave to 10-foot tall wave. That's kind of like riding the, the roller coaster. So the disciples find themselves in the middle of this kind of storm. And they look over to Jesus for help. And does anybody know what Jesus was doing? Have you already read this story? (laughs) He was sound asleep. He was sound asleep. They had to wake him up. And when they woke him up, they woke him up with this question. They said, teacher, don't you care that we are about to perish? That's a fear-filled question, isn't it? Yes. I mean, they already knew they were going to die. Teacher, don't you care that we are about to perish? And then Jesus said, now, why are you afraid? And he stood and he spoke to the wind and he spoke to the waves. And the water became glassy calm. And the disciples looked at him and said, what kind of man is this? Yes. That even the wind and the waves obey him. What a great story. But what a great question. Now, why are you afraid? Boy, Matthew could have answered that question. Remember, he's a confirmed landlubber. He's just a tax collector. And there he finds himself out in the middle of the boat on the Sea of Galilee. And when he recorded that story in the Gospel of Matthew... He used a word to describe storm that's not used anywhere else for the word storm. It's really a word that that, that more accurately depicts earthquake. It's the Greek word seismos. We think seismologist and seismograph. Matthew remembers a seismos of a storm. It's the same word he used to describe the way the earth shook at the crucifixion of Christ and the way the earth shook at the resurrection of Christ. The only three times he uses, these, uses this word, once to describe the defeat of death, once to describe the defeat of sin, and here to describe the defeat of fear. He remembered a seismos. The disciples got into the boat, and suddenly a great storm came upon them. Not all storms come suddenly. I grew up out in flat desert West Texas where we could see a storm coming for four days. (laughs) But boy, some storms come at you just all of a sudden. You don't see them coming and they're in the sky. And this storm came suddenly. And sometimes fears do that. You don't see it coming. You just step into the doctor's office to pick up the test results and all of a sudden there's a storm. You pick up the phone to answer and somebody has bad news and it's a storm. Uh, You receive news that they're laying off people at work and all of a sudden you're in a storm. Some storms just come suddenly. And when the disciples turned to Jesus for help in this sudden storm, they saw that Jesus was sound asleep. Thunder roars and Jesus snores. (laughs) He was sound asleep. Now, how could you sleep during a storm like that? Have any of you ever taken a nap on a roller coaster? I haven't either. But that's what Jesus was doing. Now, Mark, in his gospel, tells us that that Jesus was asleep in the stern with his head on a pillow. Now, that's an interesting detail, isn't it? Ancient boats, or boats in the days of Jesus, often were constructed with a platform in the stern. A small platform upon which they could place the fishing nets to get them out of the way. So maybe the boat in which Jesus found himself had that platform. And maybe that was the only protected place from the rain. We don't know, but perhaps that's why he's in the stern. And he has a pillow. Now he doesn't have a a feather pillow. A fluffy pillow. He has probably what was called a ballast bag. 
and it was used to balance the boat. It weighed about 100 pounds, and it had sand in it and leather. It was covered with leather, and it was used to balance the boat. And so Jesus is in this protected place of the boat. His head is on a pillow, and he is so sound asleep that he doesn't wake up. And his sleep is so sound that it troubles the disciples. They get angry with him. They say, teacher, don't you care that we are about to perish? Don't you care? Look what fear does. Fear makes us think that God doesn't care. Fear causes us to question the goodness of God. Fear makes us think that God doesn't notice our concerns. When we're in a state of fear, we think God doesn't care. Fear makes us think that God doesn't care. Fear also turns us into control freaks. This is a very commanding statement that the disciples are making. Implicit in these words is the statement, fix it. Fix it. Do something about it. Do something now. You know, fear can make us bossy people. Here's the reason why. Fear at its core is a perceived loss of control. We think the world is out of control. When we think the government is out of control or the spending is out of control or the church is out of control or the kids are out of control or, or my parents are out of control. When I think that my world is out of control, one way we try to deal with that is to try to control something. We try to control something or we try to control somebody. This creates a behavior that we often call obsessive compulsive behavior where we try to control a small part of our world. And we go from being good managers to being control freaks. We go from being neat and tidy to being Hitlers when it comes to our house. We get rough with people. We get bossy. We become tyrants. You see, fear does that to us. And you know what else? Fear just feels dreadful. It's a terrible emotion, isn't it? It's not a happy emotion. Fear and joy do not share the same heart. Fear and happiness do not share the same heart. Fear always pushes the happy emotions out when it comes in. It's hard to be happy and afraid at the same time. I know you know this. And none of us ever say things like, you know, I've been so happy ever since I became a hypochondriac. <laughs> Or my world is so much better ever since I learned to worry. Or I can't wait until next Friday. I've got that day set apart for anxiety. We know that fear doesn't do any good and it doesn't feel any good. And Jesus knows that too. Maybe that's why he talks about fear more than any other topic. Did you know that? He talks about fear more than any other topic. There are over 20 commands in the Gospels in which he says, do not be afraid. Statements like, be of good courage, or be strong, or have faith, or do not worry. Over 20 commands. The most common command in Scripture is don't be afraid. He doesn't want you and me to live in a state of fear. Now, we need to be clear. Because fear serves a healthy purpose. Because of fear, you don't cross a busy street. Because of fear, you don't stay in a burning building. Because of fear, you watch what you eat. You don't smoke. Fear does good things for us. Fear is God's warning system. Fear in small doses, dosages is God's gift to us. It keeps us alert. It's not the appearance of fear that's the problem. It is the occupation of fear that's the problem. It's when fear moves in and sets up shop. It's when fear becomes the oxygen that we breathe. It's when fear becomes the default reaction to everything we do. It's when fear becomes the habit of our thoughts. That's when fear becomes the problem. Here's the way I like to say it. Fear will always knock at your door. But don't invite it in for dinner. And for heaven's sake, don't invite it to spend the night. <laughs> so what can you do with fear? Well, do what Jesus did. He was once afraid. Yes, even Jesus. Do you remember when? In the Garden of Gethsemane. He was about to face the worst case scenario for him. 
And that is that while upon the cross, all the sins of the world would be placed upon him. And he would endure the separation that we would have faced had he not come for us. And so he was afraid. So how did he deal with his fear? Well, first he went to pray. He went into a garden of prayer. And he prayed honestly. And he prayed loudly. So loud that the disciples could hear him. He cried out with loud cries, the book of Hebrews says. He prayed passionately. And he had a community of people, Peter and James and John, to pray with him. And he prayed repeatedly. One prayer wasn't enough. Two prayers wasn't enough. Three prayers. Finally, after three prayers, he found courage. He prayed specifically. He said, Lord, take this cup away from me. Now, you and I can do that. You and I can do that. The next time you find yourself entering into a season of fear, enter into the Garden of Gethsemane. Spend some time in prayer. And pray passionately. Get on your knees. Stand up. Shake your fist. Shake your head. Pray with all your heart. Cry out to God for help. He loves you. And He will help you. And He doesn't want you to remain in fear. So cry out to Him. And recruit your own version of a Peter, James, and John. Some people who will pray with you. The reason that God invented cell phones is so we can keep people alert when we need prayer. You can call them up. You can send them a text message. You can say, I feel the fear coming. Pray, hurry, pray. And then pray specifically. Lord, I'm afraid of what's going to happen to my children. Or I'm afraid of what they're saying about the economy. Or I'm afraid that I'm going to fail. Or, Lord, I'm afraid I've disappointed you. Pray specifically about your fears. As long as our fears are just general and vague, they seem overwhelming and overburdening. But when we put specific words on them, we bring them down to size. And we just keep praying. Not just once, not just twice, but three times. Sometimes it takes a while. Because, you see, fear is just a bad habit of the mind. And it takes a while to break a bad habit. But God will get us to the point where our immediate response to fearful situations will be faith and not fear. Yes. We turn our attention toward yes. God and He will help us. When I was six years old, my father let me stay up with my two older sisters and watch the movie Wolfman on television. Boy, did he live to regret that decision. I came to believe that Wolfman lived in our living room, <laughs> right behind the television set. <laughs> and that was a problem, because oftentimes I would awaken in the middle of the night and I'd want a drink of water. And to get from my bedroom to the kitchen, I had to go right past Wolfman. <laughs> and I knew he was just waiting on his midnight snack <clears throat> of six-year-old, freckle-faced, red-headed boy. <laughs> and so what could I do? Well, the only thing I could do was go wake up my father. And you know what my father was doing? Can you guess what my father was doing in the middle of the night? Just like Jesus, he was sleeping. He, he was sleeping. And I'd go over and I'd wake him up and he'd say, what's wrong, son? And I'd remind him about Wolfman. <sighs> he'd sigh and get up and say, follow me. And I'd grab his t-shirt and he'd lead me right past Wolfman. Wolfman was, was afraid of my father. <laughs> and we walked right into the kitchen, and I'd drink my water, and I'd look up at my dad, and I'd think to myself, what kind of man is this? <laughs> <laughs> when the disciples awoke Jesus, he asked him, now why are you afraid? Can I ask you that question right now? Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? We don't have to be. We don't have to be. You know, I think the reason that Jesus was asleep in the storm was not because he didn't care. The fact of the matter is, he did care. And he wanted to show the disciples that the greatest fears on earth do not bring fear into heaven. God is not afraid of what brings us fear. The worst things that can happen to us do not bring him fear. So set your focus on him. Yes. Look to him. Trust him. Keep your mind on him. Respond to fears with Bible verses. 
Keep them in the back of your mind. Memorize them. Combat the fears that come into your mind by quoting, all things work together for the good. Or Jesus saying, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Just quote. You become a Bible-quoting machine. <laughs> And fight those fears with the sword of truth. It's not easy. No, it's not. Because this world is a scary place. Yes. But listen, your heavenly Father loves you. He loves you. And he does not want you to stay in a state of fear. Fear will always knock at your door. But don't invite it in for dinner. And for heaven's sake, don't let it spend the night. I'd like to offer a prayer if I can. I'd like to pray for you if you'll bow your heads. And I'm just going to ask God's blessings on all the people who hear these words. Most Heavenly Father, let your mercy be strong and mighty. Let your grace be evident and clear. Let your strength be our strength. Let your vision be our vision. Help us to see the world the way you see the world, Lord. And Father, I know that there are people who are hearing these words, who are passing through very difficult, frightening times. And I'd like to ask you, Lord, to bless them, to help them to know that you're there with them in the hospital room or in the jail cell, that you're there with them, though they think they're all alone. They're not alone. You're with them. Help them to know, Lord, that you have ideas and solutions that they've never thought of. Help them to not give up. Let your blessing be upon all these people here in the studio and all over the world who are being reminded right now by your Holy Spirit that you are close to each one of us. We thank you, Lord, and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Come on and stand up with us and sing this song. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Yeah, your love is surprising. I can feel it rising. All the joy growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel the sky song rising up in me. Surprising, I can feel it rising. All the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Lord, every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God song rising up in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Sing.
Your love makes me sing. I mean, you know, this is a great time during the Christmas season to just be singing and blessing the Lord. Oh, man, that's good. Wasn't Max Lucado fantastic? My goodness. Max. You got to go get his, get his new book called Fearless. And it is a great book. And there's so much more uh, that Max talks about in that book that you don't have to live through Christmas afraid. You can actually go through Christmas with a full heart of hope knowing God is in control. Yeah. He's in control. Yeah. Lord bless you. You may be seated. All of you just look so good here tonight. And all over the world, if you're just now joining us, well, where have you been? Well, we, we've been having a Christmas party here celebrating Jesus. Telling you, a lot of wonderful people. I'm Randy Phillips, and you just heard Max Lucado and so many more guests yet to come. But I am so glad to be joined by my two brothers for 18 years. Max Lucado said we were old. He had the audacity. Can you to believe say. that? Oh, I think we still old. look pretty good. I for look old. good. I was looking at myself over there. I still look good. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Max has a, uh, a book called Fearless, and we have a CD called Fearless. That's right. And, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good thing. God must have been, uh, he had something in mind when he was talking to his bride, his body all over the world that says, troubled times are coming, but be not afraid. I am with you. That's what the angel told Mary. Don't be afraid. And, and why fearless, you think? Well, fear really sells. And as Max was talking, uh, fear is something that captivates our heart, but the word says, fear less, hope more, in so many words. That's really the message of the gospel. Fear less. And we have our brand new CD with us, and uh, we have just enjoyed uh, touring with that and traveling all over the country with that. If you don't have the, the CD, it's called Fearless. It's called Fearless. Max gave us a good idea, I he suppose. Did. Fearless. And if you go to our website, phillipscraigandding.com, you can get that as, at a Christmas special. Dan, you wrote a song on this new album uh, that, that we have come to particularly love. It's called Nothing to Prove. And what, what was the genesis for that song? Well, you know, uh, songwriters, you're both songwriters, and songwriters depend on, I, I do in particular, real-life situations that happen that uh, come our way that place a germ idea or a nugget. And a very dear friend of mine, uh, Bishop Frank Jones, had been uh, battling cancer in Houston, Texas for uh, several months. And we knew the end was coming. I'm good friends with uh, both of his sons. And uh, I'll never forget the morning I got the email from Scott, uh, one of my dear friends, that his father had taken his last breath of earthly air and taking his first gulp of celestial air. What a, what a great thing that must be. And um, I looked at that great man's life and wanted somehow to minister to that family. And the idea is that when we get to the end of our life, and I believe Bishop Jones was this way, uh, we want to have nothing to prove, nothing to lose, and nothing to hide. And uh, I hope that's what I can say about my life. I've got a long way to go, but I want to get there. What about you? You taught me how to ride a bike Tie my shoes and fly a kite How to swim and how to fish To see a star and make a wish Said it's okay to make mistakes just don't get stuck in yesterday Forgive, forget, and move ahead Cause life is what you make of it Now you're gone and all I have Are memories I hold dear But if I'm quiet I hear your voice Still ringing in my ears Say and live with no excuses and love with no regrets Laugh a lot and leave this life With nothing left unsaid Make this world a better place And don't be afraid to cry And 
when it's finally time to say goodbye there's nothing to prove nothing to lose nothing to hide you said life cannot be measured by the place you live the car you drive the thing that counts the day you die is who you are and what's inside so tell the truth don't ever lie integrity at any price your words your bond your highest price so guard it closely with your life so many things i learned from you by life and love and play but i learned more by how you lived than what i say you said live with no excuses and love with no regrets laugh a lot and leave this life with nothing left unsaid make this world a better place don't be afraid to cry When it's finally time to say goodbye There's nothing to prove, nothing to lose, nothing to hide I only want to live my life half as well as you To leave behind what I receive is all I want to do And I love with no regrets. I laugh a lot and I leave this life with nothing left unsaid. Make this world a better place. Don't be afraid to cry. And when it's finally time to say goodbye. When it's finally time. It's finally time to say goodbye There's nothing to prove Nothing to lose Nothing to hide Yeah Nothing to hide So kind. Thank you so much. Great song, Dan. That's on our new Fearless, Fearless CD, phillipscraigandine.com. You can get that album, and you can play that. That can be, that can be a celebration song for you. Yes. You know, when you, here we are at Christmas. We're coming to the end of the year, and as I evaluate my life, there's, some, there's a lot of things I'm not proud of. And there's just some, a lot of things that I am proud of. And I, I just, I, I feel like the enemy uh, at this Christmas season, his great power is keeping you in the shadows, in darkness. But when you, the Bible says you come into the light, he has no weapon over you. Whatever you're struggling with or keeping as a secret, the Christmas time is the time where you have a moment at the manger and you just say, Lord, heal me, help me, save me. I want to be a man with nothing to prove, nothing to lose, and nothing to hide. Good song. Good song. Sean, uh, I want us to say, I want us to all say hello to our dads, because our dads, a lot of people don't know, but we're, we're preacher's kids, and that's dangerous to be on one stage Preacher's kids. You know Three, what I'm saying? Preacher's kids. You know why it's so dangerous? Why? Because we hung out for so many years with the deacon's kids. Yes, That's exactly it. right. And deacons. Deacons got us. But I want to say hello to my father and uh, wish him a Merry Christmas. Kenneth Phillips, uh, the most godly man, taught me how to pray, taught me how to fast, taught me how to be passionate for God, and to have a heart as big as the world. 
I know you want to say hello to your father. And to my mom and dad. Oh, yeah. Don't my forget the mom. Is a, my dad is a disabled veteran for this country, wounded three times in World War II, survived, came home, and, and preached the gospel for many Woo! years, and now retired. But... So Bill Dean, Bill and Mary Dean, Merry Christmas. I love you. Way up in Bentonville, Arkansas. Long way. Sean, what about you? My mom and dad, uh, Ted and Beverly Craig, started many years ago in ministry and are finishing strong. And I'm just so proud to be their son and proud to call them faithful. You know, there's a lot of people that advertise and brag about a lot of different qualities, but faithfulness, a faithful man who can find. Yeah. I, I know of one. Yeah. That's, that's my dad. Ted. Ted. Merry Christmas, Ted. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know, uh, they may not know also the three of us are, are lead pastors at churches. Uh, I'm in Austin, Texas, Promised Land West, and if, uh, if you don't have a home church, if you have a home church, don't come over there. But <laughs> if you don't, Come see me, Promised Land, Wes. Have a great time. You're, Dan, you're right I'm, here. I'm uh, right here close to this studio, Heartland Church in Irving, about to move oh, good. Uh, to North Carrollton. Good for you, my friend. But come and see us if you're in this yeah. area. South County Christian Center in South County, St. Louis, right in the middle of the USA. Oh, please and him. All right. We... We just have a heart for pastors. We are pastors, and, and our fathers are pastors. If you're a pastor here in this audience or, or in ministry of any kind, would you stand? We just want to recognize you and let the whole world see you and bless you and bless you and Merry Christmas. And God bless all of you so much. This is a song off of our, uh, off of our Fearless CD. And, Sean, why has this? It was 17 weeks at the number one song in the nation. And uh, we just, we don't, God is wanting to say something to his body. And why do you think through Revelation song that would be? Well, the Bible says in Psalm 34 and 4, I sought the Lord, he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. There's something about when you look up that it changes the world, changes the way things look. I, I pray tonight that as we sing this, that you'll just... Look up and see the Lord high and lifted up. Let him fill your life with hope, with faith. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on. Heaven's mercy seen. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on Heaven's mercy. Yeah. 
awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Yeah, yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the to praise the Lord. All over the world begin to praise the Lord. Mary's baby, my Savior, come to the manger and behold Him and worship Him. Everybody begin to worship the Lord all over the world. Healing is coming right now to you. Salvation and deliverance. Bless your name, Lord. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. this right now those of you all over the world watching by television I want you to put your hand on your heart like this would you do that everyone in our studio audience all the personnel here up in the balcony all of you wonderful folks put your hand on your heart let me lead you in a prayer right now to spend a moment at the manger adoring him all fear and apprehension loneliness and despair we cast you out in the name of Jesus you have no place at the manger. All right, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart, my life. Forgive me, Lord, of all of my sins. Cover me with your blood and fill me with your spirit. From this day forward, I'm a new creature in you. Thank you, Lord, for being born 
in my life. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Clap your hands to the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Those of you that prayed that prayer with me, there's a number on the screen, and I want you to go call those people, wonderful prayer people that just can't wait to talk to you and tell them, I, I feel like God is near me. I am not alone. God bless you all. And God, what an awesome atmosphere of praise and worship in this place right now. Healing and deliverance is coming to you. God bless all of you. I went to Birmingham, Alabama. I don't know why, but I did. I heard about a young man named Matt Pitt. And I heard that he was turning Alabama upside down in something called the basement going to the basement to pull heaven down and I went there with my student minister Tim Ball and we walked in not knowing what to expect there was 3,000 young people single adults all ages all ethnicities crazy about Jesus I, I, it, it changed my life I've never seen anything like it as a matter of fact you want to take a sneak peek into what the basement looks like watch this right here this is the time this is the hour where God is raising up people who are bold and who are unashamed for the gospel of Jesus Christ and you are changing history It's going to be a long night. No. <laughs> Matt Pitt, welcome to TBN, my friend. Well, I am welcome. How's everybody doing tonight? This is a great man. Uh, Matt Pitt is a voice, a voice to this generation. And if any generation needed a voice, we do right now. We, uh, we are all, all over the place. Matt, uh, welcome to TBN, and you're from Alabama. Sweet home, Alabama. You know, I got cuddled at a That's all. That's all. I got called up a minute ago when y'all were singing the Revelation song like everybody else. And man, y'all were holy, holy. And I, I realized I had the mic on. I was like, man, I don't need to hear this voice right no, here singing. I, I absolutely agree. But I got called friend. up. I got called up. Singing for Jesus. Well, I. Uh, I believe he's look, an eight. I, he seems uh, well, like an eight. Tell me about tell me about the basement. How did the basement come about? The basement. That's an unusual name. What what is it about the basement? How did the basement come about? Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, I have to start by saying there was a mama that was praying. I tell people all the time. I, I y'all gave shout outs a minute ago to your dads and your moms and the people you love. You know what? I had a praying Jesus freak loving. I'm talking about she woke up sleep eating breathe Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm just gonna tell you how it is. And so, Mama, if you're watching, this is your shout out. How many Hi, Jesus Mom. freak mamas we got out there tonight? <laughs> no, come on. How many Jesus freak mamas we got out there tonight? <laughs> Lord. My mom was so wild. I can remember the times I grew up, and I can remember sitting on the couch with my friends, and, and, and she would walk in, and, and, and like she'd, she'd be carrying the Bible, and she, she hates when I say this, but it's so true. And I can remember her walking in. She, she'd walk right up to me and my friends. We'd be watching a movie we weren't supposed to, and she'd just be like, I, I cover you in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd look at my friends. I'd be like, man, she smokes a lot of pot, dude. She's crazy. You know what I'm saying? She's nuts. I don't know. And, uh, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, my mama believed in Jesus. Jesus, she believed he was coming. She believed that, it, that, that at any given moment, Jesus was coming. She yeah. used to scare me to death. Man, I remember waking up out of my bed, and I'd go and look for her. I'd see my dad there, and I'd be like, no, that, that don't matter. He, I got to look for mama. Be. I got to look for mama. <laughs> I got to look for mama, you know. And so it really starts with a woman who loves some Jesus. Yeah. And, and somebody asked me one time, they said, 
if you could paint a portrait of Christ, like if you, if you could just imagine what he would be like, um, what would it look like? They were just, you know, trying to imagine. And I'm serious, man. I was like, man, if, 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 I, could, if I could picture a lifestyle it would be like my mom. Yeah. Because, man, I'm talking about she lived this Jesus thing. She Jesus believed it. She believed in prayer. She believed in God's word. She believed he was true. I'm telling you, women, you are powerful if you believe in God. Yeah. Women are powerful. All right. Look. All right. How, I mean, I, 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 what, how did what, mama? Randy, you asked me the story. I met your mama. Okay, she is a sweetheart. Right. Missy Pitt. Okay. Back to the basement. All right. How did we get to the basement? So how we got to the basement was this. Um, honestly, my, my father, for about 25 years, had an alcohol addiction on a daily basis. And so mom would take us to different places. I grew up, I, if I could parallel it to any story in the Bible, it would be the prodigal son. Grew up in the house of God. Um, I just probably, like a lot of others, strayed. And, um, and I, throughout the years, got in trouble, got expelled in school. Man, I was a problem child. Some people know they've had kids that have been ADD, ADHD, all of the above. I was all that, plus learning disability student. My mom couldn't teach me. My dad couldn't teach me. I was just in and out of school. And finally, somehow, I landed through, a, through, a, through a, like a scholarship going to the University of Alabama. And uh, I get there, and, and, and I'm having a good time. And one of the first guys I bump heads with, to be honest with you, was a, a big Coke dealer on our campus. And uh, I began to dabble in drugs in high school, but man, drugs became like a lifestyle to me in college. And uh, I'll never forget uh, what happened one night. I, 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 I had had a long night of drugs, and my parents called me the next morning, and they said, Matt, we're coming to see you. We want to come visit you down at the university. And they, they don't surprise visit me much. I've been telling them I'm an A, B, C student, you know, and, and I've been at Bible studies, and, and mama, I promise you, I am who I said I am, and I'm going to tell you they showed up on the wrong day. Mm. There was about 90,000 people in the state. Stadium. Uh, this was six years ago, and uh, I can remember like it was yesterday. I walk up into the stadium, and, and I remember as I got to the top of the stadium, I had a drug overdose. And uh, had it not been my mom and dad there that day, I remember waking up in the hospital, and my dad was holding my bed, and I remember him screaming for doctors, saying, I need help, I need help. And I can remember him screaming. I woke up, and I thought, how did I go from there to here? And I remember my mom crying because nobody wants to disappoint their mom. I mean, no. here we are at Christmas in the Christmas mode and the Christmas Eve, but nobody wants to really disappoint their mom, much less their dad. My mom's crying and she's looking at me and, and, and the, 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 doc, the doctors, don't, they don't know what's going on. And I realized that day that really God will allow you to become what you hate in order to hate what you've become. Mm. And I'm going to tell you, this Good. is what happened for me. I got pulled out of the university and I, went, I came home and uh, I'll just, in the shortest version I can, my dad, I'm going to get a little praise report if you don't mind. Forgive me. I get excited and I channel this passion the best way that I can. So if I start hopping up off the chair, it's just because I'm excited about what God's done. Um, my dad, my dad went to the doctor. The doctor told my father, he said, you know what, Larry, you have not probably 10 years left to live because the alcohol has consumed your insides. And there's nothing we can do unless there was a miracle that happened in your life. And can I tell you, man, my dad didn't believe in that kind of stuff. He, he knew my mom was a Bible-believing woman, but he was like, it just ain't for me. Can I tell somebody in here tonight that my dad went outside that hospital and out of that doctor's office, ju jumped in his truck, and he said, look, Jesus, if you are real... I need to invite you into my life. And if you can get rid of this alcohol addiction, yeah. I invite you into my life. And I'm going to tell you, it was a one-step program. My dad was delivered, Praise set God. free, set on fire for Jesus Christ. So you asked about the basement. Here's what happened. The basement. Um, my dad comes home. He gets radically set on fire. And how many women could testify that if a man gets set on fire, so it's powerful when a woman does it. One can put 1,000 to flight. Come on, yeah. somebody. But two can put 10,000 to flight. And so my dad got saved. He got, he got, I mean, he got radical, Randy. I'm talking about mm -hmm. radical. He was a, he got radical, passionate about God. And, uh, and he came home, and I'll never forget how the whole story entwined, but they got a phone call. My dad pulled over one day as he took me back near a hospital, and he popped a random drug test on me. And uh, he said, he pulled over the car, I'll never forget it, and he said, son, tell me today, if you're still on drugs, I I'm going to help you get out of this. But if you lie to me one more time, you're gone. And my parents, I mean, they've always been from, there for me. They picked me up from jail. They picked me up from being expelled. You name it, they've been there. But when my dad said, you're gone, I didn't understand what he was saying. 
But this day, something was different. And just like every other probably teenager at the time, I said, I dare you to take me in there. How dare you accuse me of being on drugs? How dare you? And I start getting all cocky and wild with my dad. And he said, you dare me? Let's go. And so we walked into the hospital. They give me a drug test. And right around Christmas, mm. they call. See, this is kind of a celebration mode for me because they call. And uh, that doctor reports to my mom and dad, your son's on drugs. And they tell him the drugs that I was on. Mm. And I remember my dad slams the phone down. I heard him and my mom crying in the basement of my house. That's why we call it the basement. And I remember walking down the steps. It's also where my room was. And I remember walking down there. My, my mom and dad looking at me. My mom's, I mean, looking at me with every tear she has. And my dad's looking at me. And my dad says, today you can go. You can go upstairs and you can pack your bags because you're gone. And I said, like, 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 what do you mean, Dad? I, I'm gone. What do you mean? And he said, you can go call one of your friends because you ain't got none. And he said, or you can go. And I'm going to tell you this. Clear as that day, I was one step away from being homeless. All I could do is probably like the prodigal son did is I just, I just fell to my knees. And I said, Mama, you can't kick me out of my house. I ain't got nowhere to go. I don't have a dollar to my name. You can't kick me out of my house. And my mom and dad that day... I mean, bro, with sincerity in my heart, I had never experienced the grace, the love, the mercy, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness. I've never experienced God in my life. When I experienced God, when I hit those knees, and I'm talking Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Je the Rose of Sharon, yeah. the, the, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. When Almighty God came in that basement, I'm sorry for getting loud, but I'm telling you, when he does something to somebody, you can't but do nothing but testify. Are you with me tonight? <laughs> talk to myself. No, and you know what? Here. Oh, talk to them. Okay, I'll just make sure. I just, I'll talk to myself if I need to, and I'm going to tell you what happened. That day, God swept in my basement. The love of God swept in my basement. My mom and dad, I mean, something happened. They saw forgiveness, repentance in my heart. Our whole entire family, we just started a Bible study called, and, and we didn't mean to call it the basement. We just, we just got together. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call on me, and I will answer you. I, man, this crowd right here is getting rowdy. And they say, call on me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. And I'm going to tell you one thing, brother. It's been great and mighty. So we started in that basement. It moved to a church. It moved out of that church to another church to another church. One of the last churches we moved into, into the one that you came, seats about 7,500 people. Uh, I was in Israel doing a study where all the disciples were walking, and the pastor, I told him, the fire marshal had shut us down in this last sanctuary, and, and everybody thought we ought to move. It was the biggest church in our state. It, it seated the most people. And I looked at the pastor that I was on the tour in Israel with, and I said, can, can we move the basement into your church? And he said, do you think like, like 7,000 people would come? And I said, I don't know, but I'm telling you, if you call on God, he'll do great and mighty things. <laughs> And so we moved in that church, and I'm telling you, people were coming by the droves, people were getting saved, people were getting pumped up. And I'm telling you, this generation, I know that people are seeing a lot of things in the news, and we're seeing a lot of, uh, of negative things, but I'm going to tell you something. There is something happening in this generation. The prodigals are coming home. People are getting fired up. Babies you've been praying about, babies that don't even know where they are right now. Some might not even be tuned in. Some might be in a club or a bar right now, but I'm telling you, there is something happening. God's word would be that he is not a lie, no. and if he says that it is so, it is so. My mama, can, can I say one more thing that my mama said? Mama, I know you're going to back me up if you're watching. Acts 16, 31, she used to always say it, for me and my house. <laughs> for me and my house. <laughs> we shall be saved. And I'm going to tell you something. She took an alcoholic husband 25 years. What if she had stopped 24 years and 364 days? Mm, mm. I go across the country speaking. I, this, this last year, I've had the opportunity to speak to 200,000 uh, different students because of one woman's prayers. Yeah. She could have stopped 24 years, 364 Faithful. days. She said, I'm going to go one more day. Faithful. My dad could have stopped, but he said, I'm going to do it one more day. I could have stopped and did it one more day. My, mm. my sister was sexually abused, lost her hair because of it. Our family, to be honest with you, Randy, was the perfect picture of messed up. You got an alcoholic for a husband, a drug addict for a son. You got a daughter who's been sexually abused, and now she's contemplating suicide because she don't know why she's losing her hair as a teenager. And our family looked really jacked up. That's what it looked like. And Jesus said, I can turn all this around. Mm. Now look this way. But if you just put call on me. 
But if you just would call on me, somebody. <laughs> Matt Pitt, you know, I wish you could just get excited. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, just, I came home from the basement, and I told my wife, I said, that kid has got it. He is going to change this world. He is going to change a generation. Yeah. Man, I believe in you. Appreciate that. And, and I am so uh, pumped up that this Christmas looks different than all the oh, other Christmases. Oh, oh. You, you know what? God has his hand on you in such an amazing yeah. fashion. Wow. All right, look at me. Look. <laughs> Do not sing, but just look at this. I want you to speak into that camera in there to some parents. Yeah. And, you know, Christmas time, boy, that can just, bubbling up to the surface of your heart can be such a strong emotion. And if there's a dysfunction or a brokenness in your family, something about Christmas time that makes that pain to another level. I want you to look into that camera and talk to a mother or father who's got a son yeah. or a daughter that they have wept and cried over. They, they've fasted and prayed and just don't look like anything's turning. Mm. You know, your story tonight, as we're here at the manger, is don't give up. Amen. Right. There's a Matt Pitt yes. that can touch this generation. Would you pray over and Absolutely. talk to some parents that have lost hope? Mama, Daddy, if you're out there, I just want to encourage you by saying a couple of words. Um, just a few Christmases ago, my parents received a phone call that their son was as messed up as messed up can get. But I'm telling you, there's nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus. You can say that name and literally things can just happen. I don't understand it all. I've never been a professor to say I get it all. But I get enough to know that the name Jesus has more power in one drop of the blood from his elbow than anything me and you can muster up or think up. So if you're out there and you're saying, you know what, Matt, I hear your story, but it ain't happened to me. I want to tell you like my mama would say it to you if she was here, because she truly would be the best one to tell you. Don't give up. I promise you he is who he says he is. And I promise you, if you believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, and you, you, you continue to proclaim over your household that they will be saved. Whether it's a husband, it might be a husband. It might be a son. It might be a daughter. It might be a relative, a family member. I don't know who it is for you, but i tell you one thing. You never know who God is getting ready to use. You never know who he's stirring up. You never know when he's going to call a son back home. You never know. All you can do is pray, and all you can do is believe, and all you can do is stand on God's Word. And I'm going to tell you something. If you stand on that Word, and you believe it is what He says it is, I promise you one thing. You're going to wake up one day like my mama, and you're going to be a jumping, and a shouting, and a praising, and saying, how could God do this? So you asked me to pray. Yeah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Mama, if you're out there, Father, we thank you, God, for how awesome you are. Oh, thank Lord, you, if there's Jesus. prodigals out there who have not come home yet, I command them in Jesus' name to come on home. Yes, Lord. Lord, tell them the party's a lot better on this side than it is outside. Yes, Lord. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that there's husbands like my father. God, that is out there who's maybe not faithful right now, Lord, or that need an encouragement or just, just, just the punch to come home. Lord, that you would show them it's not about religion, it's about relationship. Father, I ask if there's daughters or family members or people that might not understand the things of you. Maybe they've been burnt by Christianity. God, I ask that they would be tuned in about how awesome you really are. Oh, Jesus. Father, we stand in agreement because your word says any two touching on anything in agreement, it shall be done. God, let this be the year yes. that the prodigal son returns. Yes, Lord. Let this be the year that the prodigals come on home. Yes. And let this be the year that we celebrate how awesome Jesus is. Oh, and if you're you. out there and you would say, Jesus is awesome, can I hear a mighty, mighty amen? Amen. I, I glory, want to, glory, no, no, glory, glory. don't, don't sing, don't sing. I want to say to all, all pastors out there listening, watching, you, you need to have Matt Pitt at your church. I, I have, I'm telling you. Thank you, girl. Ju <laughs> just, <laughs> just being around him is so infectious, and I mean that in a good way. Yeah. But he just rubs off on you the contagious energy of what it's like to have a life of destruction and now a life of hope. You truly embody what Jesus did 
at the manger, coming yeah. to earth to reconcile fallen man. So, so, so get a hold of Matt. Matt, what is, what's your website address? If you don't believe some of the stuff we've been talking about tonight, we need you to go to thebasementonline.com. If you need to be shook up, I mean, if you just want to get shook up, I dare you. Look at the website. Man, this thing will jump out of side that little internet box there right there, and it'll say, Rawr. and I'm telling you, God is doing something. Or if you maybe you got a local youth pastor, a local youth minister, just anybody, they need to be encouraged mm -hmm. that God's doing. Listen, we got everything from Christian rap. I, I can't believe to tech. I got a DJ, man. Yeah, He's yeah. running worship, a Christian band preaching illustrated messages, you name it. I'm telling you, God is bringing a generation home. So if you want to see what God's doing, go to thebasementonline.com. This isn't a plug. This is just to hype your spirit man up. Yeah, it is. And so you need to go tune in and That's check good. out what God's doing because Randy's trying to push me off here. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just, uh, <laughs> just, uh, I, I remember when I went in there with my student pastor. Yeah. Uh, we just couldn't believe it. You, it, it's it's it, the light show, the the energy in that place. Bro, it's something and, and then they, they kind of brought me in early, and they, you know, it's just, I don't know how many of the place seats. How many is it seat? At that church, I'm not sure on the attendance. But we just moved there. You're, you're, one of your gentlemen that was so kind to me, a uh, good Alabama boy, he said, uh, now this is my favorite part. Watch the doors. And I guess the, the kids had been outside, the all the, the Randy, folks. Randy, you keep saying kids. Well, it was it's all not kids. It's all, Come on now. But the, the doors open. <laughs> And here they come. And I mean, they've packed that place out. And the energy and the DJs. Who's the DJs? That, that's a, I'm about five seconds Does anybody away know Ken Jones out there? Anybody know Ken Jones? Yeah. I'm about five no, let me do it. seconds let me do it. away from bringing you no, the most no. amazing this praise. Come on, Randy. I'm going to give you five. I'm going to give, give you four. I'm going to give, give you three, two, two one. one. Everybody go wild. Wow. Go wild. <laughs> Now, let's calm down now. All right. It's think, church, uh, it's church. Let's calm down now. I think I pulled a hamstring. I think I pulled a hamstring on that one. <laughs> but that was so much fun. All right. Uh, All right. I, before you leave, I want to present you with an early Christmas gift. What's that, babe? I want to present you with an early Christmas gift on behalf of myself, on behalf of the nation of Texas, I present you with a Longhorn oh. jersey. <laughs> do, do you know if I take this, how many people are going to be ready to beat me up when I yep. get back to Alabama? Yeah. Because Alabama and Texas meeting up, and it's on, baby. And I'm going to tell you right now. You better, you better bring your... I thought your... we were just loving each other a minute ago. You, you I better... just hating on me in this room now. <laughs> you better bring your A game because the Longhorns are coming. Are they coming? They're coming. And on that note, as sure as they are coming, I want to remind everybody that's watching tonight, whether you, where no part you are in the world, I do want to remind you, he said it's coming, it's true. Matthew 24, 14 says, once the gospel has been preached, he's coming. I wanted to tell you it's a promise, and I think that there are so many incredible, awesome incredible pastors out there as Randy and so many others here tonight and tuned around the world. Thank you for doing the work of the Lord. It's us and all the people out there and everybody that's encouraged that we are doing the work so that our Jesus can come back. Yep, and I'm telling yep, you, he's yep. coming. He you is. better get ready. So you can all horn that. I love you. Give me a little rock. I love you. Matt Pitt. Matt Pitt, come on. Ah, Lord. You know, I was, uh, I was actually thinking about introducing him to my daughter, but I don't know now. <laughs> I don't know. I love Matt Pitt. I tell you, that's, that's one great, great kid. Uh, go to thebasementonline.com. Change your life. Change your life. I want to I wanna sing a song for, uh, for the season. I want to sing a song for my Savior. I was thinking about the wise men, how wise they were, how wise they were for making their long journey. Some of you have been journeying a long way to this manger. And I want you to just say, like this song says, lead me to the sun, O little star. Lead 
me to the sun, oh little star. Cause I have journeyed from so very far. Could it be that maybe this manger holds a baby who'll be called the precious Lamb of God? Oh, lead me to the sun, oh little star. Come worship and bow down and place my earthly treasure on the ground. And could it be that maybe this manger holds a baby who will wear a savior's thorny crown? Oh, let me come worship and bow down. What on earth could heaven really need with me? I stand amazed at the possibility to think that I could serve redemption's holy plan. With gifts I'm holding in my hand. Oh, yeah. Play it, Mark. Thank you, Mark. I sure hope you're uh, enjoying this praise of the Lord. Max Lucado, Matt Pitt, they just, they just don't get any better than that. Men that follow Christ with all their heart and change those around them. And this lady has changed so many people. Uh, she's been a movie actress, a movie star. She's been in television, television series. She's an author. She's a mother. And she's here tonight to uh, talk to us about the Christmas season. Would you welcome actress Janine Turner? <laughs> Hello, Miss Janine. Lord bless you. Hey, you look you lovely. Thank so you. glad you're here. Merry Christmas, Janine. That's a hard Janine. act to follow. Wow. <laughs> Can you well, imagine okay. uh, him being in your house? I'm telling you, I would just be, I'd have you know, to put him in a closet somewhere. It, it, well, you know what's interesting is I was texting my daughter because we, we read the Bible every night, the Daily Walk Bible and whatnot, but that was, I could brain freeze. I'm like, Juliet, what's that, what's that favorite scripture we like? Guess what it was? Jeremiah, Jeremiah 33, 33. 33. Of course, of course. Can you believe of course. that? I showed Matt afterwards. I said, look at my, my uh, phone here. What's one of the favorite Christmas traditions of Janine Turner? 
Well, Janine Turner, as a mother, one of my favorite traditions with my daughter is, is actually on Christmas morning, I make her read the Bible. We read, we read from the Bible before we go see what Santa has brought. Wow. Because I think that that's, I know. It's that's almost, great. <laughs> you can't leave the door. I think that's important. And it one is. of my best favorite memories as a child was my parents. My father was Episcopalian. My mother's a Baptist. So. What? Yeah, I know. So it was always interesting to see which church we were going to go to. And, and uh, one of my favorite Christmas Eves was when my father and my mother both actually went to church. I went with them. And on the way home, my dad smoking his pipe and the, the uh, snow was falling. And it was a really special Christmas Eve for me. Wow. Yeah. So do you have a favorite Christmas uh, song? Oh, Holy Night. Oh, Holy Night. Stars are brightly shining. That's it. But my favorite part is fall on your knees. Fall on your knees. Yep. Gets me every time. Oh, hear <laughs> the angel voices. Oh, night divine. That's it. Oh, night. <laughs> when Christ was, was born. born. That's good. I like that. <laughs> hey, you're a... Thank you. You're a singer. Well... You're, well, you know, we know that you were a... Uh, that you were a movie star. We know that you're a, in a lot of television series. Who knew that you were a singer? Well, it's sort of my midlife renewal, just like my hair color. <laughs> you know, uh, I wasn't gonna say anything about that. Uh, but I, uh, I'm a redhead on that cover. You're a redhead here. Uh, I change color all the you're time. You're a blonde. Well, Juliet and I, my daughter loves to compose music, and okay. I love to write. I feel that God really uh, inspires me in that area, and so. Um, we, I sat down and wrote a bunch of lyrics, and my daughter uh, wrote the music, and we, we actually did it. It was one of our New Year's resolutions. Oh, that's yeah. great. Hey, listen, how, how do they get the CD? Well, JanineTurner.com. JanineTurner.com. Or it's Easy on enough. iTunes now, Amazon.com. Okay. That way. All right, well, uh, you, you know, you came to my church. I did, and you know what? What it was a delight. Awesome. What an awesome church, Promised Land West. What an well, awesome pastor you. you are. And your precious daughter came. I don't know that I've ever met such an incredible lady. How old is she? She just had her 12th birthday. And you know when Talk you Talk about a me, lot of prayer! <laughs> yeah. When you, uh, when you told me she was 12, I, that, that was a little bit hard for me to believe. Not that I doubted you, I just, mm -hmm. I've never met such a mature, eloquent, classy Aww, young lady. I mean, it was you. incredible. You've done thank you. such an incredible job. Now, who is the... Uh, Who's the, is this your horse? That's our horse, Coley Boy. I, we wrote two songs on the album about horses. The horse wrote the song? <laughs> no, no, oh. no. I wrote the song and then uh, Juliet wrote the lyrics. Okay. I had a mare that died uh, last a year ago. I had her for 24 years. Oh. And Coley was sad, so we wrote oh. a, a... But God is all through the music. Yeah. So this I can't is your, write a song without being faith-based. That's Coley Boy. And that's your beautiful and that's daughter? See, she's in her snake boots there because we yeah. live on a ranch and we have well, to have snake boots. you got to have boots if you're in Texas. That's you, right. You see, well, you've got on boots. <laughs> I have on boots, yeah. And, and of course... You Oh, you have a nice, good yep. Texas boots. Yep, uh, absolutely. A good alligator gave yeah. his life for those, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Okay, so, uh, Janine Turner, when I first saw you, you were in Northern Exposure. Right. Does anybody remember Northern Exposure? All right. It was a quirky little, uh, quirky little uh, show about these folks up in this strange place and oh, the terrain was different for me and, and right. of course you just jumped off the screen you're so gorgeous thank you and uh fleshman just i wanted to whip him sometimes <laughs> right. but you, what, what was it like uh northern exposure was that your first uh, introduction into television and a series like that well i start. i was in um well, that was my big break. I, I was in New York City modeling at 15, and I was in L.A. at 17. So I've been doing, I've been acting for a long time, and, and it's a wonderful, amazing story. I had eight dollars left um, when I booked Northern Exposure, and I, I added it up recently. That was uh, 12,000 no's with four auditions a day from age 15 to 27 for my big break. You just said no. And I, I was on my knees so many times, and I had so much rejection and so much despair. And, and I remember being on my knees one time when I didn't get this part I thought I really wanted with uh, Tom Selleck was producing it. And that was going to be it. I had $8 yeah. left. This was it. And I didn't get it after mm -hmm. six auditions and whatnot. And I was on my knees, and I called this agent, and I said, will you represent me? And he goes, no. And I said, well, can I send you some more tape? It wouldn't help. You know, mm -hmm. reject and the, and the cast director of Northern Exposure actually said to me, well, we saw all of our best talent last week. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. Anyway, I'm on my knees, and God spoke to me, 
And he said, I have given you a flame and do not allow anyone else to put it out. Mm. So I uh, praise God that I kept going. I showed up for that one last audition and Northern Exposure happened for me. And then from that, you went into some movies. I did. Did Cliffhanger with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Froze. It's yeah, really cold. cold. And then you have recently, you've been in uh, uh, Friday Night Light. And you've yes. been in, uh, of course, other... Strong Medicine for yes. Lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, what uh, is it possible, and I know that it's possible because you're an example of it. Did you have a conversion moment or a time where you just said, God, I need you? Was it from your childhood up or was there a moment in your adult life that you, that you had that transforming moment? You know, it's such an interesting question. Having been raised by an Episcopalian, they don't really have those moments. <laughs> You know, like Catholics, they, they have it a different way. And, and then having a, a Baptist mother, you know, my great my great Baptists have moments. They have moments. They have the evangelical moments. Pentecostals have a moment. lot of moments. <laughs> a lot of moments. So I was christened as an Episcopalian. And then when I was 14 years old, I was going to Saginaw Baptist Church. And I remember being called. I was called. I felt down to the front. And I gave my life to Jesus. And, yeah. and became, I was baptized again. The, you know, dunked the Baptist way. Yeah, and, yeah. And so... I believe, though, every day, every morning I get on my knees yeah. and say, God, I give my life over to yes. you and guide me to do your will and fill me with your Holy Spirit, yes. no matter what I'm going through. So I've had my pivotal moments when my daughter was born and I realized we were going to be doing it. You know, it didn't work out the way I had prayed and hoped and we we're going to be doing it on our own. I think my faith took a big, big, deep, deep, deep walk. And uh, with my daughter, we read the Bible every night. My faith is everything to yeah. me. Yeah, and, and that's, evident. God. that's yeah. evident because you, uh, you don't compromise. And you, uh, you keep faith as an integral part. You're just so beautiful inwardly and outwardly. And uh, you're an example to so many. To so many who think, like, like an aspiring actress or actor out there right now, that it feels like they have to, uh, to be something they're not or to sell out or to whatever. You can keep your faith. You can keep your faith. And it is a hard place to do. I hate it when people brand Hollywood as an evil place because I don't believe it's evil. I believe that there are good people yes. um, in Hollywood. Um, but it is a tough place to be. And it is a, a lot very different than my traditional beliefs. So you have to hold strong to what, to what you believe. But it can be done. Yes. Um, and my, you know, when I wrote my book, Holding Her Head High, it was really interesting to me because so many main, the mainstream media didn't really want to promote the book. Like, oh, we love Janine Turner. Sure, we'll have her on. And then they saw that I said Christ yeah. or Jesus, and there was sort of a block. And same thing with, you know, it's just, it's just a tough place. Yeah. But now, when you came to my church in Austin, you and your precious daughter, you came because we were uh, celebrating single parents. Yes. And uh, we did a massive campaign there in Austin to say to the single parents, you are not alone. You are not alone. It's another song. Would you say that that was about? And uh, we had you as our special guest, and you just hit it out of the park. We got a lot of media coverage. And would you believe, uh, we, I had some wonderful, well-meaning pastors in the city write me letters and say, you should not be celebrating mm. s a single parent uh, people because that's a, that's a stigma that you're encouraging. Uh, but... You know, half, uh, almost half of my city mm -hmm. is single, and a large a number of that has uh, children. And so, either by divorce or, or whatever, single parent is a reality of our generation. Yes. And, and, and you did such a great job in saying to all of those who were present that we gave out 200 of your books and your CDs and gift bags to single parents who came that day, besides those who were at our church. And I got so many letters lately saying, that moment changed my life. I felt like I was truly not alone. Uh, well, and I applaud you for doing that because, you know, and I talk about it in the book. Yes. Um, if, if, a single parent, if a single parent is at church and they're being turned away, find another church. Because, you know, like he who is without sin cast the first stone. Yes. And when I read the Bible in a year, there are two things I walked away with. Uh, forgiveness and we do not judge. And there aren't very many men or women who, who say, when I grow up, I want to be a single mom. And when I grew up, I want to be divorced and raise my kid alone. Uh, I don't think that happens, but life happens. And it's how we treat um, each other, no matter what they've been through in life, is, is what's important. And so are the children. Oh, that's... that's so, and if we're going to be pro-life... Yes. And if we're going to encourage uh, to be pro-life and for, uh, to go against uh, abortion, then we need to support, to support the women who are out yes, there doing do. it. You know? Now, 
Uh, if you would talk to the camera to a, a, a lonely single parent, a sing, being a single parent is such a struggle. You're both mother and father, and it's so hard. And during the Christmas season, it can be overwhelming. And I just want you to talk for just a moment to a single parent who's watching right now that just feels like at this Christmas season, I am truly all alone. And uh, would you offer them hope right now? Yes, what I would like to say is that I am a single mother and I believe that God is my daughter's father and that God is my husband. And it can be tough. Um, there are days I, I just don't know if I can get out of bed um, and I have some down times. And I'm writing a book now because I'm also 23 years sober about keeping sober through the holidays, being an example to my daughter. And she's a tween now and I'm worried that what kind of choices are she, is, what kind of choices are she, is she gonna make? But what I think about in those times when I feel really, really down is that tomorrow is always a better day and God does provide. And I think of myself as in an ocean sometimes where I'm being, being these waves are just booing me from side to side, but I'm in this life preserver, that old fashioned red and white life preserver. And my hands are over the edge and my head's through and I'm being carried through this ocean wave and that life preserver is Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. You're not alone. Denise Turner, you're a this this book, when you came to uh, when you came to our church to celebrate being a single parent and uh, that journey that you've been on, you, you were promoting this book, holding her head high. This is about single parents. Through seventeen centuries. Through 17 centuries. So it has Constantine's mother in there and, and women from the uh, mid mid Middle Ages. Yes. And uh, five wonderful revolutionary women, two amazing slave women. Yeah. Uh, the first woman to run for president in 1884. Women. All single who, parents. All single parents who went through a really devastating dark hole in their life. I've been there yes. where I've had to reach for the hand of God to pull me out of it. Yes. And these women did it. And they, I felt God just sort of sent these women to me. Yeah. And I think when I finished the book, I said, okay, Juliet, let's go. You can we, do it. If they can do it, we can do it. Well, I want to encourage you to go to JanineTurner.com. Janine, you've got, you've got uh, CDs on there that, that Christian yoga. Christian yoga. Yeah. I'm trying to figure all that out. Well, you know. You know those old search commercials, two, two, two yeah, this and one? I do. Well, you get two workouts in one. You get to okay. work out your body, you get to work out your soul with okay. Jesus. Okay, all right. So uh, she's, got a, <laughs> she's got a wonderful book, Holding Her Head High. And of course, you, you need to get her CD with her precious daughter. I'm telling you, that, that, that young lady is special. Would you thank tell her hi for me? Thank you, I will do. Well, she is a sweetheart. Janine Turner, thank you for being on Praise the Lord. Go to JaneneTurner.com. Her story will absolutely thrill you excite you. You can get so many wonderful Christmas gifts there that will encourage someone else. Uh, Janine, you're just a special lady. Thank you. So are you. And, and thank you so much. Well, you're not a lady, but you're a man. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I you're thought I was. Man. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you for all you do, reaching out to, to single parents. Yeah, I appreciate you know, that that's, that's a passion of mine. Yeah. I just see, my dad was like that. My mother and dad, they, they are always, my dad, I remember, uh, so many times, I, he was just out of his pocket giving money, and I said, Dad, you, you can't do that, and he'd just keep giving it anyway. Uh, if you're a single parent watching, T TBN loves you. We love you. The body of Christ loves you. You are not alone. Uh, you get in a good church that'll put their arms around you and love you through this Christmas season. This can be the greatest Christmas you've ever had. You are not alone. Would you thank Janine Turner for being here, Janine? We love you. Thank you for having You're me. You're a sweetheart. Appreciate it. Janine Turner. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Janine. Thank you. What a great, uh, what a great praise the Lord. I'm telling you, so many wonderful guests. What a great season. I, I want to thank, I want to thank so much uh, the, the opportunity, the honor, the honor of getting to host Praise the Lord. It's just uh, to be able to bring these wonderful people into the lives of so many. And thank you for watching. I pray that this Christmas season finds you blessed, and I pray that you spend moments at the manger that will forever change your life. I want to sing one more song for you before I go. Another song for the season, Jesus, King of Angels. Jesus.
Jesus, King of angels, heaven's light. Shine your face upon us this Christmas night. Tiny baby, come and be our king. Light of heaven, keep us in your peace. Remind me how you make dark spirits flee. And speak your power to the raging sea. mercy to sinful man remind me Jesus this is what I am the universe is vast beyond the stars but you are mindful sparrow falls and mindful of the anxious thoughts that find me surround me and bind me With all my heart, I love you, Sovereign Lord. Tomorrow may I love you even more. And rise to speak the goodness of your name. Until I close my eyes and sleep again The universe is vast beyond the stars But you are mindful when a sparrow falls And mindful of Surround me and bind me, Jesus, King of Angel, Heaven's Light. Shine your face on us this Christmas night. Thank you so much for, for watching tonight. I pray this broadcast has been a blessing to you. And if it has, I'm pleading with you to call the numbers on the screen and tell them that there was a particular moment in tonight's Praise the Lord that, that made your Christmas phenomenal, that changed it from some dark time to a time of hope. Max Lucado, Phillips, Craig, and Dean. I like those boys. <laughs> Two thirds of Phillips, Craig, and Dean can really sing. There's one of them who need a little help. But Janine Turner, you are a, a godly, classy, gorgeous lady, and praise God that you are in Hollywood, that you are professing your faith, not compromising. You're a, you're a great, marvelous actress, and, and you love Jesus. Thank you, Janine Turner. And then Matt Pitt. What can we say about Matt Pitt? <laughs> Just uh, 
An incredible young man. Listen, I, I pray that your Christmas is so blessed this year. Really, I do. Go to all the websites of the wonderful people who have been on this program and, and uh, support them and thank them for sharing their gifts. I want to pray over you again before we leave, praise the Lord, to let you know that God truly is with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for our time together. Thank you for TBN and praise the Lord. Thank you for all the viewers who have tuned in tonight. Thank you, Jesus, because you have allowed your precious spirit to be born in us. Lord, we take moments, come to the manger, and we adore you, Lord. Oh, how we adore you. We thank you for stepping in the warm pool of humanity without protocol or pretense. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. May God bless you. May you have a marvelous Christmas. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P, 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, Call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now, until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world. Experience love. Experience peace. Experience joy. Experience Jesus. At TBN's Holy Land Experience. The Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida is an incredible place where you can go back in time and not just see, but experience life in biblical times. Enter through the gates and you're transported to a Jerusalem marketplace with all its unique sights and sounds. Ahead is the Temple Plaza with its gleaming six-story replica of Herod's Great Temple. And around the corner is Jerusalem AD 66, the world's largest indoor model of Jerusalem. What was life like for Moses and the children of Israel? Experience the wilderness tabernacle through an amazing live presentation. Experience the journey of the written word from ancient days to the present in the stunning scriptorium. I have made the first translation of the complete Latin Bible into English with its priceless collection of manuscripts and scrolls. But most of all, experience life with Jesus through a series of powerful reenactments. His teaching. Be broken and spilled up for my people. His love. His healing. His suffering. His death and resurrection. Even have the opportunity to experience Holy Communion in a unique setting reminiscent of the Last Supper. Experience the lives of compelling biblical characters in the new presentations of The Woman at the Well, Forgiven, and Four Women Who Love Jesus. The four women was so profound, and the love that was shown was just outstanding. You could feel the embrace. It was awesome. The Holy Land Experience is filled with many other attractions. Throughout the park, you'll experience inspiring gardens, including the New Church of All Nations Prayer Garden and the Garden of Eden, unique shops, fascinating demonstrations, and always beautiful music, as well as the incredible crystal living waters. 
Plus, our youngest visitors can experience the smile of a child adventure land. What have others said about their experience? Phenomenal. I liked it a lot. Fantastic. It's a great family trip. It is so much fun. They replay the roles just so beautifully. Every time I come, I learn something new. Come to Holy Land Experience. You will not be disappointed. Experience love. Experience peace. Experience joy. Experience Jesus at TBN's Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida. Hi, my name is Bishop Jim Bowen. And during this season of Christmas, we all feel so much pressure in our, in our lives. Everywhere we look, it seems like things seem to be unraveling. But there's a promise in the Word of God. It's a promise of hope. If you look to the Lord tonight and know that He's your strength, and you look to him today, he'll bring you through whatever difficulty you're facing. And I want to encourage you, don't give up. You keep believing, keep pushing forward because there's a window in front of you. It's called the window of hope. Keep Christ tied to that vision. And no matter what you're going through, you'll make it. Hello, everybody. This is Marvin Winans Jr. And I am wishing you a wonderful, a Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Enjoy the holiday, enjoy your family, but remember that Jesus is definitely the reason for the season. Hi, I'm Rick Ridings from Jerusalem, Israel. I lead a ministry there that for over five years has been involved in 24 seven worship and prayer overlooking Mount Zion. We're very blessed by those of you who have been praying for Jerusalem, praying for Israel through the years. We're excited now to be able to partner with TBN so that we can pray for your request there in Jerusalem. You can send in your needs for your family, for your friends, for your neighbors to TBN. They will forward them on to us there in Jerusalem. We will pray over those and then we'll take them to the Western Wall where they will be presented at the place that God calls the very footstool of his throne forever. So we encourage you, send in those prayer requests so that we can agree together with you and may the God of Israel work mightily in your family, in your friends, and in your neighbors. TMC Recording Studio is a ministry arm of the Trinity Broadcasting Network. We are blessed being a, a division of TBN. We have the greatest, the finest equipment, the best A to D converters, and Mike Prees, our Mike Locker, is second to none. The board is incredible. It's the best you can buy. As a producer, being in studios all over the country, I just think it's the best place that, in the world to come to. If somebody's coming in and this is their first recording experience, we try to see what it is that the Lord has given you, the ministry that you have, and try to help you enhance that. So whether you are a professional established act out touring or whether this is the very first time you've even considered recording, you should give us a call and see what we can do for you. It's a really comfortable place for folks to come. Merry Christmas from the Trinity Broadcasting Network. The following program is sponsored by you, our TBN partners, and because of your generous support, is now airing around the world.